Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Wodge, and lately I've been on a completely mad tear of reviewing and comparing 4K displays against each other, and I apologize to a lot of you guys out there that might not be interested in getting a 4K display for any reason whatsoever, but there's still a lot of people interested in the product, and it's an emerging kind of technology that is really exciting for pixel geeks like me. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking all that information that I've learned from using all those 4K monitors to come up with a top five list of my favorite monitors that you should be seriously considering if you're interested in getting into the ultra HD space whether it's for productivity or even gaming. So without any further ado let's get right into my top five favorite 4k monitors. Now the first 4K monitor that I'm gonna talk about is the Samsung U28D590. This, this was one of the first 4K monitors to ever be released. And even though it has some kind of limitations in terms of color reproductions and overall viewing angles because it's just a standard TN panel, it's certainly usable for 99% of average people out there. And the big highlight is it has that beautiful native resolution of 3840 by 2160. And it can do that at 60 Hertz refresh rate. And all you need is a DisplayPort 1.2 graphics card to make that happen. So it's very versatile. And the biggest thing about this monitor is the price point. Right now, it's just above that $500 mark. And it's sometimes when it goes on sale, it goes under that mark. So uh, definitely the best bang for the dollar 4K monitor that's available right now. The only bad side about the monitor besides the TN panel itself, which is not that big of a concern uh, to me, you're gonna be viewing the monitor uh, straight on 99% of the time anyways but to me the biggest weakness of the d590 is the fact that the stand is not great in terms of overall articulation and you can't uh, mount it to a wall or a desk mount because it doesn't have a vase mount connection so therefore if you're interested in just spending a few dollars more you can get the asus pb28 7q which has all the same features pretty much the same overall kind of picture quality as the samsung but it has a very nice fully articulating stand that has lots of versatility Utility and a full 100 millimeter vase amount connection. So uh, both monitors are fantastic and both are fairly reasonably priced, especially for being UHD at 60 Hertz refresh rate. Now the fourth monitor on my list is specifically targeted for the professionals in mind. So anybody who does any CAD work, graphic design, web development, anything related to productivity based applications, you definitely want to check out the BenQ BL3201PH. This is a monitor specifically designed for the professional. It has excellent color reproduction in terms of color gamut. We're looking at over 100% of the sRGB color spectrum, almost 100% of the Adobe RGB RGB color spectrum. It's a full 10-bit panel and users also have access to 12-bit lookup tables. In terms of color accuracy, if you're talking about the sRGB color spectrum, it gets an average Delta E rating of less than two, which is uh, quite fantastic. The other two things I like about this monitor is that it has a very handy little remote control that comes with it. And uh, it has a fantastic stand that has great articulation and flexibility with a standard vase amount connection. So lots of flexibility and in terms of price point, it's uh, just around that thousand dollar mark, which is just right for professionals. And uh, 32 inch is a really great size for productivity as well. You can scale things at 100% with the no DPI scaling and uh, you could still read the text pretty clearly and it's not so small where you need a magnifying glass to actually use it properly. So definitely nice there. Moving on, the third monitor on this list definitely has to be the Dell P2715Q, which just came out. And in terms of uh, overall 4K monitor, it has pretty much everything for anybody out there. It has a great versatile stand that you would expect from a Dell. It has a nice anti-glare finish, tons of connectivity in terms of USB connectivity, a full SD card slot. You can also daisy chain a second 4K monitor because it has a display port out. And uh, being a full IPS panel, it has a great overall color reproduction and a very versatile viewing angles as you would expect from a high-end panel. And uh, definitely a excellent and a great overall choice for pretty much everybody out there. The only gripe that I have is the overall size. 27 inch is fine for a 2560 by 1440p monitor, but but uh, at that 4K resolution, I think size does matter. And 27 inches for some people might be nice because it's uh, a very versatile 
size. You can really put it on anybody's desk. But for me, I would probably prefer something bigger. But if you're wanting to get into the 4K market and uh, don't want a colossal screen and want everything available to you, I think you should definitely check out the Dell P2715Q. Now, my next pick is kind of interesting. It's for people that perhaps don't want to dive into the 4K space just yet and 1440p just isn't enough for them. You might want to check out the LG 34UM95. This is an ultra wide 21 by 9 aspect ratio display. It has a native resolution of 3440 by 1440 P and it can do that at 60 Hertz refresh rate. It's an IPS display. So great overall color reproduction and viewing angles. And there's a lot of these monitors that are available right now at different resolutions, but I think this is probably the best one out there. It is the flat version of this ultra wide display LG and Samsung and also Dell have curved versions of uh, this ultra wide format. But I think for the extra kind of $300 savings you get by just getting the flat version of the LG. Uh, I don't think that the curve is going to add too much of a benefit and I'd rather just save that extra cash and put it to use somewhere else. And that's completely my opinion. You definitely want to check out this monitor in real life. It's a very unique looking design. And even though it might be not as high resolution as a proper uh, Ultra HD monitor, I think it's still very usable. You don't have to deal with any DPI scaling and there's absolutely ton of advantages of going with this, especially if you're coming from a multiple monitor configuration. Now last but certainly not least, my number one favorite 4K monitor that I've used for my computing experience is technically not a monitor. It's actually a TV, specifically the LG 40 UB8000. Now straight off the bat, I have to admit that this choice is not ideal for everybody out there, but for me personally, I think 40 inch display with a 4K resolution is a perfect overall configuration. Mainly to the fact that you don't have to use any DPI scaling, you can scale everything at one to one pixel configuration and if you're just about two to about three and a half feet back, it's absolutely viewable, it's crystal sharp, and the 4K experience goes from a technical demonstration to something that you would want to use every day. And sure, I have to admit that 40 inch is a pretty large display size for using as a desktop monitor, but you can think of it as having four 1080p monitors glued together seamlessly in one whole package. And uh, when you see it in real life, and if you have the desk space, for it and price wise it's absolutely great you can get one of these 40 inch uh, 4k monitor for around the $600 mark which makes it as competitive if not better than most of the 4k monitors out there the only disadvantage uh, thus far of uh, doing something like this is you have to deal with HDMI 2.0 which uh, can do the 4k resolution at 60 Hertz refresh rate but importantly you're gonna need a graphics card that has the HDMI 2.0 output and that is only available on the latest generation graphics cards. So if you have an older graphics card, uh, adapting uh, DisplayPort 1.2 to HDMI 2.0 is a little bit tricky. There's not really an adapter available thus far, but uh, perhaps soon in the future there might be one, but uh, I would bet that that adapter itself would be at least somewhere around $100 itself. So you might want to think about upgrading your GPU if you want to go forth and uh, use a T 4K TV as a monitor. But I think it's all worth it at the end. The experience I had with the LG 40 inch display was quite sensational. And it's certainly an option that you should probably consider if you're interested in getting into the 4K space and you don't mind the large overall screen size. And if you have the latest generation graphics card that has HDMI 2.0 compliance. But on that guys, that's really it. Make sure to leave your suggestions down below on which 4K monitors you would go with. And if you want uh, individual links to all of the different uh, monitors that we discussed we have Amazon uh, links down below and if you ever go through our links we get a little bit of kickback if you uh, buy something on Amazon it doesn't cost you anything extra but it helps us make videos like this possible and we also have links in the description of uh, the dedicated videos that we've done on most of the monitors that I talked about in this video so definitely check those out give us a thumbs up if you like the video thanks so much for watching and we'll see you later take care